Greetings fellow travelers on the journey to truth. And since Jesus Christ is the truth, that's where our journey begins and ends. Okay, He is the Alpha and Omega. So He is our starting point and He is our destination. Anyhow, I have been doing a series on Bible history and of course, you know, since this information is very new to most listeners, it generally, it uh, naturally raises some questions. And from time to time, I get questions by email and, you know, try and answer most of them. And sometimes uh, these questions, I believe, are val they are good questions and it would benefit other listeners as well to see these questions answered, uh, not just privately in an email, but by doing a short video on them. So here's a question from a listener by the name of Michael who sent this to me a little while ago and I was planning on answering it earlier but then uh, YouTube, you know, of course, as uh, some of you are aware, threw a loop uh, by deleting my channel, you know, most uh, without any reason whatsoever because I speak the truth on it. I guess that was the reason why and truth is not welcome in this world. Anyhow, we will continue to speak the truth. We will continue to speak about Jesus Christ. We will continue to speak about the Bible. We will continue to speak about God's holy word and those who will listen, they will listen and those who don't, they won't. So that's, you know, everybody's own choice. Anyhow, this question has something to do with the teaching that the sons of God of Genesis chapter 6 and the book of Job they were men that came before Adam. That Adam was not the first man, that our first flesh and blood creature, intelligent flesh and blood creature that God created. There have been others that came before him. And this, of course, is supported very much by, by uh, you know, just the sheer evidence. Actually, I'm going to be doing a video very shortly on all the megalithic ruins around the world. And it is really, it'll shock people, I think, to see how much of how many of these ruins are scattered all over the earth. People are generally familiar about the ones in places like Peru, but you know, they don't know that, you know, these are like all the way from uh, Siberia on the, on Eastern Russia, right down to the Southern tip of South America in Argentina. And of course, in Asia, in Japan, in uh, Cambodia, China, uh, you name it, like, you know, India, these in, in in Africa in the Middle East, it is it is so much so much so much evidence that you know there have been other civilizations quite different from our own, and they are of course you know on this earth is not inhabited by angels. It's, it's always been inhabited. It was designed for corporeal flesh and blood creatures. So there were flesh and blood men. And uh, some of these men or some of these flesh and blood creatures were what we call giants of very gigantic stature, as a matter of fact. In the Bible, we read the story about David and Goliath. And Goliath is estimated to have been around 9, 10 feet tall. But we're not talking about just 9, 10 feet tall giants. Okay, these giants that were that we would consider to be giants today, 9 or 10 feet tall, they were like, you know, grasshoppers in the sight of some of these tit titan-sized giants that have existed in the past. Even in the book of Amos, we can read, you know, God said, you know, I destroyed the Amorite whose height was as the height of cedars. Cedars can grow to be how tall? 40, 50 feet tall? So, you know what? The Bible confirms that, you know, these type of creatures, both of every shape and size, and uh, have existed here. They have built worlds here. They have destroyed worlds here. And the evidence is all across. It is undeniable. All right. So that video will be coming shortly with lots of, you know, video evidence of these ruins, which will boggle people's minds as to how they're scattered everywhere, even in Montana, you know, in the United States, the megalithic ruins. And most people don't know that they exist because these are the type of things which, uh, which put, uh, you know, which throw a wrench in this official Big Bang evolution model that has been shoved down our throats. It uh, disproves it vehemently that this is not possible, that, you know, more advanced civilizations than our own have existed right here. And therefore, this idea that, you know, a monkey became a Neanderthal man and, you know, this and that, it was the caveman and now suddenly we are, you know, we have these flying crafts and we are jetting around the world and all this kind of stuff. And did it all happen with evolution? No, it didn't. Actually, the world has been in a state of deterioration rather than in a state of construction 
for a very, very long time. And technology has existed that far surpasses that which exists even today. So that is why governments and, you know, powers that be, they have worked very hard to keep people, you know, they actually uh, close a lot of these areas off where these ruins are to be found. And, uh, and because a lot of these are in remote places, like in Russia, for example, they're not easily accessible, especially by the average person. But in this age of the Internet, like you can go and you can just Google, like, you know, on YouTube, for example, do a search in megaliths and it'll boggle your mind how many websites come up and how many different places in the world that have already been videoed and can you imagine how many more there are that have not yet been seen that we not that we do not we not yet aware of that might be buried under like you know 20 feet of soil or that might be inside the waters around the earth it is so that just shows you the extent of construction the sheer number of people that have come and gone, it is totally, totally, totally mind-boggling. Today, the Earth's population is estimated to be 6, 7 billion or somewhere around there. But I would venture to say that tens and tens and tens of billions, if not hundreds of billions, and maybe even more people, people, and by people, I mean, you know, like that look like humans have already come and gone. So the history of the past, it is like so much bigger and is so much greater. And that, my friends, is actually the, because history is his story, the story of God. It is because people estimate God to be very small. Therefore, they, they try and compress everything into small time frames, into small boxes, into, you know, really, really uh, something that can, they can comprehend with their mind. But they don't understand that our God is infinite and therefore his creation has been, has, it, it has existed and will exist on a much bigger scale than we can ever imagine. And just because we do not understand what exact, you know, purpose God might have had in having all these creatures come into existence, you know, we think that everything concerns just us. But, you know, God is working on many levels. He's working with the angels. He worked with these sons of God, and he still is, as we read in the book of Job, because they still exist in some world somewhere, like maybe right on this earth or up in the heavens somewhere. They do. All right. So, you know, what exact purpose they have served, like we can comprehend some of them because they're related to us. But, you know, some of them may not be. So we don't understand all of the things that God has been doing. You know, we think it's us and nobody else. But... That is not the case, okay? God's vision and God's plannings and God's purposes are on a much greater scale than we can comprehend. And just because we cannot have that sort of mental comprehension that he does, it doesn't mean that it has not happened or what is going to happen in the future is going to be far bigger on a scale than we have been taught or we have ever thought possible. By the way, the video playing on the screen is by, some, by a person named Victor Camiseo. And it is titled, More Photos of Megaliths 2017. I'll put a link to this in the description. And this, like I said, is just one of thousands of videos on these megalithic structures and ruins that are scattered across the face of the earth and also inside the earth as well as inside the waters everywhere. So this is the email that I received from Michael a few weeks back and uh, the questions that he asked. And I will break it down into the different questions and try and answer each one of them one by one. Uh, so here's the email. I came across your video on YouTube while doing some studying, while doing some reading and research on pre-Adamic man. Your interpretation of scripture is well laid out and fills in a lot of holes that the usual interpretations leave. The interpretation you and many others have does leave one overarching hole that I'm still trying to find an explanation to. Namely, there were pre-Adamic men and these men races were corrupt. How do we reconcile that with the biblical teachings that sin came into the world through Adam? If the pre-Adamic men were corrupt, then sin was already in the world. I am having trouble finding an explanation to that question in light of the idea of existing races existing before Adam. I am trying to reconcile passages like Romans 5.12 and other similar passages with this theory. For example, I could logic that some of that these other races fell when Adam fell, but that would mean that these other races and creation were perfect before Adam was created. But that does not appear to be the case. Also, that would leave the question of why God even made Adam to start with 
if God had already created other men that had already sinned. If, on that other hand, the other men gods were descendants of Adam that moved away and became evil, that would reconcile the problem of the sin timeline. But that would not explain how men could have predated Adam by thousands of years. Do you have any thoughts on how, when entered creation? How, when, I guess he missed the word sin, entered creation, if there were men before Adam? Or do you know of any videos on top of the head you could recommend? So anyhow, let me begin by answering the first question that uh, Michael had, which is, the interpretation you and many others have does leave one overarching hole that I'm still trying to find an explanation to. Namely, there were pre-Adamic men and these men races were corrupt. How do we reconcile that with biblical teachings that sin came into the world through Adam? All right, so let's look at Romans 5.12. Whereas by one man sin entered into the world. What does it tell us? Sin entered into the world and death by sin. So sin and death entered into the world through one man, which is that man Adam. Now, nowhere in the Bible does it tell us that Adam, that sin or evil was not present in God's creation before Adam was made. As a matter of fact, if you go back and watch my gap theory video, in it I prove very clearly scripturally that uh, darkness, evil, sin, they were already in creation before Adam was made. Okay, this is why God planted the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If the knowledge of evil had already not been in existence, if evil had not been in existence, neither would have been the knowledge of evil. Okay, and also the serpent, Satan, was already in the Garden of Eden and he was the devil. He was already evil. He was not going to become evil after Adam sinned. No, he was already fully he was already fully grown and matured in his evil, and he had already become the devil, all right? And in Ezekiel chapter 28, 15, we read, you know, thou was in regards to the angel, the anointed cherub, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. So we understand that iniquity or sin and evil began with the race of angels with the anointed cherub. When did this happen? After Adam was formed, but before. Of course, all this happened a long time before Adam. That's how we got to be Genesis 1-2, that the earth was without form and void. It had become a ruined wasteland because of all the evil of the inhabitants of both the heavens and of the earth back in the day before Adam. Excuse my voice, I'm just recovering from a very, very bad uh, cold. So, uh, I apologize for that. Anyhow... So that has already been shown that evil and sin were already there. They were not in the world. They were at the door. All Adam did was open the door and sin and death marched right in. Okay, But that does not mean that Adam was the originator of sin or evil in God's creation. The Bible is quite clear on that. Okay, And I think I have proven that quite adequately that evil existed a long time before Adam was made. And as a matter of fact, it had to exist before Adam was made. And now let's answer the other part of the question as to why evil must have existed both in the race of angels as well as in the race of men, the sons of God that came before Adam. Because, well, let me answer this question for you. So here's the next question that Michael asks. For example, I could logic that those other races fell when Adam fell, but that would mean that those other races and creation were perfect before Adam was created, but that does not appear to be the case. Well, actually, the Bible is quite clear that, you know, there was a time of perfection, which I have covered in my Golden Age of Creation videos, that, uh, that creation was perfect. Okay, there was no sin, there was no evil, there was no darkness in it until the day that this anointed cherub's iniquity was found in him. So that was the time when sin and evil entered into God's creation, not through Adam, but through this anointed cherub. So the Bible is plainly teaches us that, okay? So I could logic that these races fell when Adam fell. No, no, there's no reason to logic that because or reason that because the races, some of them, had already fallen long time before Adam was made, okay? 
Also, that would lead the question of why God made Adam to start with if God had already created other men that had already sinned. Well, the sons of God are like, you know, flesh and blood. They are genetically compatible with the race of Adam. This is why they were able to reproduce with the daughters of Adam in Genesis chapter 6. And they produced the mighty men, which were the heroes of the of mythology, like people like Heracles or Hercules, okay? Anyway, that I have covered in my uh, previous videos as well on the sons of God. And if you haven't seen that, you can see that. Okay, so these sons of God had sinned. Some of them already had sinned. They had. And uh, why would God make Adam? Okay, let's answer that question. So that is the question. Why would God make Adam? If he already had made men and some of them already had sinned, why did he not just, you know, redeem them and uh, do what Jesus did for Adam? That is a good question. And I like people when they ask good questions. And therefore, let's see if we can find a good answer to this question. Now, before YouTube took down my, uh, my channel, you know, without any reason, uh, I had posted some almost 300 videos and a lot of them probably like, you know, close to uh, 100 videos or so were on Bible history in which I covered extensively the ages of creation that have come and gone. And as I said in the introduction to this video, you know, we don't understand everything that God is doing. OK, God is so multifaceted and he's working on so many different levels that it is an impossibility for us to comprehend that. You know, God is working with the angels, for example, and we know some of these angels fell, but what about the ones that did not? So God has a purpose for those angels. Same thing with the sons of God, men that God created in the beginning, about whom we read in Job chapter 38, verse 7, when all the sons of God shouted for joy, when they saw the earth being made, because that was going to be their home. Okay, they were flesh and blood. All right, so some of these sons of men, sons of God, I know they did sin. Okay, this is where we get all the gods of mythology, you know, like Zeus and, uh, and Thor and uh, Ram and Krishna in India and such, you know. They are all even, they, these, these, were, they, these were those sons of God, some of the ones that sinned, okay. What about the ones that did not? What purpose do they have? In Job we read, you know, that they still meet God on the Mount of Congregation and they come and present themselves before it. What purpose are they serving for God? You know, we don't know the exact answer to that and we won't until we leave this world. Okay, when we when when the knowledge in full is come, then we will understand what God exactly has been doing. But we are more concerned with these sons of God that sinned and they had interaction with the race of Adam, as we read about in Genesis chapter 6, for example. All right. So if these sons of God, as this Michael asked, if they had already sinned, then what need was there for God to make Adam? Well, let me tell you, you know, there is a difference between, although we are genetically compatible, that these races of these sons of God, they are genetically quite similar to add the race of Adam. This is why they were able to, you know, have, have relations and to produce offspring. But spiritually, they are quite different. Because when you understand the origins of these sons of God, that they originated with God in heaven, as we read about in Job chapter 38, that, you know, when God was laying the foundations of the earth, the morning stars, which are angels, were already present, and these sons of God who are humans were already present, okay? So their origination and their knowledge and understanding is of quite a different level than that was of Adam. Therefore, when they sinned, they sinned while their eyes were opened. Whereas in the case of Adam and Eve, we know that it was their eyes, which is their spiritual eyes. And I've covered that in the past as well in this uh, video titled, You Shall Be As Gods. So like I said, in the past, I had way more videos, but still there are enough already in my new channel that people can go and refer to those videos that the eyes, the spiritual eyes of Adam and Eve are only opened after they eat the fruit of the tree, the knowledge of good and evil. Whereas in the case of those sons of God, they were with God. Their eyes were already opened right from the beginning. So when they sinned, they sinned with their eyes open. Okay. This is the reason why there was no redemption for them, just like for the anointed cherub. 
they knew what they were doing. Whereas in the case of Adam and Eve, they did not. They had not seen any evil. They had not seen any sin. They had not seen any death. They did not understand what they were doing. Okay, this is the reason why it is written in 1 Corinthians, in Adam all die, in Christ everyone shall be made alive. And again, like I've done a series of videos on the topic of death, which will explain to you what it means that all shall be made alive. Which means that Adam and Eve, although they sinned, their sin was qualitatively different from that of these sons of God. And this is the reason why it was nobody from those original races that were chosen to be the vessel through whom God would incarnate himself. Okay, God would incarnate himself only through the race of Adam. Jesus Christ could only come through the race of Adam, not through the races of these original sons of God. Because their sins were not forgivable. Okay? They were not pardonable because they knew exactly what they were doing. Whereas in just like the anointed cherub knew exactly what he was doing. But in the case of Adam and Eve, because they did not, they were deceived. Therefore, they were forgiven for what they had done. And it is this reason God used their sin and all the evil that they brought into this world to show and demonstrate to us his love. The unconditional love that he has. He loved us not because we are good or we are righteous, but despite our sinful and evil condition, he loved us. He had compassion on us because he understood that our forefathers, our first father and mother, they did not know the consequences of their action. Therefore, he himself had borne that consequence on, on his, in his own body on the tree in the form of Jesus Christ. He had already taken care of that. But in so doing, he showed us something, which is John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It is only because of the sin of Adam that it became possible for God to come and demonstrate his love and by doing that to be able to free us from the consequences of Adam's sin, okay, which is that we were all doomed to die, but God has made all alive in Jesus Christ. Now, as I've taught in those videos that I have on the topic of death, that although everybody will be made alive, everybody will not remain alive. Some will enter into second death because now they sin with their eyes open, just as the sons of God did, just as these angels did. So yes, my friend Michael, sin and evil did exist in God's creation before Adam was made. Adam simply opened the door. Like God said to Cain, sin is crouching at your door. Can you shall have mastery over it otherwise it is going to overpower you now God didn't say Sikain you are creating the sin he said it's already just at outside your door it's knocking keep that door shut okay and Adam was supposed to well you know we knew that Adam was did what he had to do because that served the purposes of God but Adam should have shut that door but Adam didn't know what he was doing and therefore he opened that door and what came rushing in was all of the evil that has existed in God's creation, all of the evil spirits, all of the demons, all of, uh, you know, death and all the other evil spirits. They came rushing into our world because Adam opened that door. But then again, God knew that's what he was going to do. And therefore he had already, the Lamb of God had already been slain from the foundation of of the world. Adam had already been forgiven even before he did what he did. Now in regards to these sons of God, okay, everybody can understand that the angels sinned. They do not understand why these sons of God were made in the first place and why they have, some of them had to sin. And that has to do with, which I have taught again in the past, is that what are we in Christ? We are new creatures in Christ, but what type of creature are we? Are we a creature of spirit or are we a creature of flesh? Actually, the answer is that we are both, okay? And because Adam had to go through this passage of evil, he had to encounter both the evils of the spirit and the evils of the flesh. 
Therefore, before Adam could be made, there had to exist creatures who would introduce evil on a spiritual level in God's creation, which the anointed cherub did because he was spirit. And they also had to introduce evil on the level of flesh, which the sons of God were, and they introduced, they perfected the evils of the flesh, whereas the race of angels perfected the evils of the spirit. Okay. And once they had been perfected, it is at that time that the book of the knowledge of evil had been fully written, that God was then able to plant this tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden. And it is then that Adam and Eve would be introduced to the evils of the spirit and the evils of the flesh. And it is Jesus Christ in that cross on Calvary he defeated both those evils, the evils of the spirit, which includes, you know, such things as death, a spiritual death. And secondly, also the evils of the flesh, which, you know, we understand like evils of the flesh, such as lust, such as, you know, gluttony, like what Bible calls like the belly. All these things were taken care of, but we had to un we had to go through this passage of being inflicted by the evils both of the spirit and of the flesh. Now I've talked about this in the past so I'm not going to go into much detail as to the differences between the evils of the spirit and the evils of the flesh but you know evils of the spirit are things like you know wanting to be worshipped as God and having to desiring power, desiring to rulership desiring the position of God. Those are evils of the spirit, which is what the evil, which is what the anointed cherub did. Evils of the flesh are more like, you know, lust. And uh, the stories of these Greek gods, for example, Zeus, etc., that's what they're filled with. They're like, you know, they lusted after human women. They lusted after, you know, the flesh of uh, anything. Boys, girls, beasts, you name it. Okay. And then again, like, you know, they were giving over to eating and drinking and just satisfaction of the body. These stories have a basis in truth. So these are the evils that they introduced into God's creation, whereas the angels introduced a le level of evil which is of a different nature. And yet all of these evils had to come and inflict the race of Adam. And it is when Jesus came and defeated it that is how he made it possible for us to be freed from these evils forever and therefore to be freed from the clutches of death and to have to give us to be given the promise of eternal life and finally michael asked this question do you have this question do you have any thoughts on how when sin entered creation if there were men before adam or do you know of any videos of the top of your head you could point me to well, Michael, you know, yes, uh, my uh, Bible history playlist, uh, you can go on my channel on YouTube and uh, I have a backup channel on Vimeo where also these videos can be found and you can watch them all because they will answer a lot of these questions. We un understand the sin entered creation through Ezekiel 28.15, through when the sin, when the iniquity was first found in God's creation before which everything was perfect, it was found in the anointed cherub. And of course, as I have shown in uh, my videos on the progressive ages of history and the gold to the silver age to the bronze age, is that although it began in the race of angels, they also then were joined in their evil by some of these sons of God who later on became the gods of mythology. Okay, these were the people on the earth, the sons of God who occupied the earth. Some of them did join these other angels these evil angels in their sin and uh, that is how sin entered the earth it entered the heavens through the angels it entered the earth through these original sons of god and what is the timeline this happened like the silver age begins with the sin of the anointed cherub and i think it is in that very age that some of these sons of god became followers of these angelic race and later on, as I showed you in uh, part four of this Bible history series, that they had wars between each other, which is how God always turns these evil people against each other. And they did fight and they did war. And I believe that is how 
these angels originally as recorded in the book of Jude ended up in chains of everlasting darkness bound in hell okay so I think that these questions have been answered that Adam was not the originator of sin he was simply the man that opened the door to sin that already existed in God's creation God has made the races of angels for his own purposes the evil ones of course to introduce evil into his creation but the, but the ones that have not sinned, you know, what exact purpose is they serve, we will find out later on. Same thing with these sons of God. Some of them did turn to evil. They became what we know as the gods of mythology. They built worlds right here on this earth for the evidence of which some of it I've been playing in the video that you've been seeing on the screen. And uh, we'll, I have talked much about it. We'll do so again in more videos in the future. And these sons of God, you know, they introduced into God's creations the evils of the flesh. So that when Adam came, who a later on in Jesus Christ would be a new creature who was both spirit and flesh, their victory for them to be the sons of God, they had to have been tested and their testing and their trying had to come in the form of both the sins of the spirit and the sins of the flesh which jesus ever overcame them both on the cross and therefore he has made it possible for us to have victory over the sins of the spirit which the angels introduced and the sins of the flesh which the sons of god introduced okay so these things have all happened for a purpose for a reason god's you know made everything by his wisdom and he has made all things for himself as the bible tells us so we understand that one of the purposes of making these creatures was that they would be the originators and the authors of evil in God's creation. And when they had finished their, God is finished. When this purpose of evil is finished, so too will they be finished. Okay, that is what the Bible clearly teaches us. And on the other hand, there is, of course, some other purposes that they fulfill for God which we do not know because we don't have much interaction with them. We don't know what's going on up there or even around in our earth. You know, there are other worlds that exist here. What's happening there? We don't know. We do not know the answers to all those questions. And frankly, we don't need to know. But we do understand that the history of ages past is mostly the history of the birth of evil, the growth of evil, the maturing of evil. And finally, when it came to be a full age and became absolute, and it is only when that had happened that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil could be planted in the Garden of Eden. And then God would set about to introduce the race of Adam to this evil through Satan by using Satan. And then he himself would use what happened after that, you know, that event in the Garden of Eden to shower us with his love, to cover us with his forgiveness to bring us from death into life if we will only believe. He did all that and that was how he demonstrated not just to us but to all of his creation what love is. This is why we are told in, uh, in the writings of the Apostle Paul that we will be teaching the angels, you know. We will, that is what, it is the church that is going to teach the angels, the church, the real church of Jesus Christ because we will have been made perfect in love. And being made perfect in love is something that could never happen except we had passed through this passage through the evil of creation. And those evils did not originate with Adam. They originated with the race of angels and passed from them to the races of the sons of God. I hope this answers all these questions and I'm glad, you know, people ask questions so we can all learn from them. And uh, sometimes, you know, when I haven't really thought about these topics myself in uh, some of these questions, then when I get around to studying, then it gives me more understanding as well. So I'm thankful for that. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, this is Paul Sandhu. I'll be back again in a few days because I do want to do uh, a video on these ancient technologies and these ancient ruins, which show us about this, which teach us a great deal about these wars that have happened on this earth in the past which turned it into a ruined wasteland 
which we find it to be in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, that the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Okay, God bless you all. Have a wonderful week, and uh, thanks for listening. History began long ago, many years before man. There is so much we don't know that went into God's plan. Why do stars stay in place in the heavens? Why do atoms behave as they do? Yet what God does reveal, no one wants to conceal. It's a message great and true. Because he alone